talk. Hi everybody, welcome to this talk. Um, as you may know, we'll cover today, the session will cover about, a about beacons and a distance, but first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tarhan Oz, I'm an Android developer, I'm also an entrepreneur living and working here in Paris. Uh, you can find on my blog some technical resources and Android, clean coding, unit testing, uh, startuping, lean startuping, mainly entrepreneurship, everything that has a meaning for me and things also that I have struggled with. So I'm sharing the information with you uh, kindly. Uh, don't hesitate to follow me on, or to interact with me on social networks. I'll be more than happy to answer any kind of questions. And lastly, I'm also an active member of the Paris Android User Group, so you may have seen me here around as a staffer for the past two days, uh, as a co-organizer. Uh, so yes, you know about myself, Noah, I, I wanted to know a bit more about you. Um, how many of you have used beacons in the professional personal projects? Quite okay, it's actually around 10 in the room. Uh, and how many of you knows about Edisons? Okay, it's roughly the same number. Um, so the idea here is not only to cover the basics of beacons, but also to give you some technical insights. So at the end of the talk, you could be able to you know, start playing with the beacons. So this is my target uh, today. <coughs> so let's start with the basics, so we can have all a common understanding of what we're talking about. So what's a beacon? Uh, I've got here one in my hand. Actually, a beacon is a device like this that broadcasts something. And we're using the technical term of advertising data. So the beacon advertises data. Uh, it's most of the time autonomous, so it's self-powered. So we have to have in mind that uh, we have to monitor this device in some way once deployed on the field. Um, it's using BLE technology, Bluetooth Low Energy. And once deployed on the field, uh, it's a one-way communication. You're not interacting with the device, you're not communicating with it, but rather you're passively listening to whatever the device broadcasts to you. So combining all these criteria, like the one-way communication, the BLE technology, and also the frequency in which the device advertises data, you are able to have up to a few years of autonomy, which is quite interesting uh, once on the field. So what's the beacon? What's, uh, what is used for, actually? Um, unfortunately, nowadays, uh, every business or every project is cost-driven, right? So I will tell you how much I bought this one. It actually costs uh, me about 15 or 20 bucks, public price. Uh, so let's imagine about the retail price, price or even the price in a few months, thanks to the Moore's Law or any kind of projection. So. Um, it's quite cheap, actually. Cheap, actually. Um, so the idea behind beacons is to put them in relevant places, like places that are relevant for your business, for the city, but most importantly for the end users. You know, like giving, like in bus stops or train station, airports, <laughs> indoors, like in stores, malls, or even if your own office. So wherever that has a meaning for a, for the end user that you can give the user a better proximity experience. Because beacons are all about proximity. You're detecting the beacons if you are in range of the beacons. So you don't know, uh, you know precisely how far you're from the beacons, but you know roughly as an abstract manner if you're far, like 10 or 20 meters, if you're near, like a few <laughs> meters, or if you're you know, immediately next to the beacon. So it's all about giving the user a better proximity experience. You have to have this in mind. So, that are beacons. What's a distant? Um, back in mid-July 2015, so a few months earlier, Google has made an announcement, uh, actually that caught my eyes. They said, a distant, an open beacon format. Well, I like everything related to open, so I start, you know, by curiosity, I start investigating, and it appeared that a distant is not a hardware, it's not a beacon. Uh, a distance is not a software neither. And as the title says, it's a beacon format. So, actually it's a specification that says if your beacon is a distant compliant, it has to broadcast that kind of information. Because beacon is all about broadcasting information. 
so the full specification is available on GitHub. So it's something in progress <coughs> still. And roughly the specification says that your beacon has to advertise three kinds of data, three kinds of frame, and uh, we'll see the detail of each of the frames. And each frame is identified by a value at a specific offset within the frame. This is how you, can, you are able to, you know, to detect your frame. So let's start with the first one, the Ediston UID. Basically, this frame, the beacon tells the people around, the devices around, hey, this is my ID. Uh, you have here what a frame look like, looks like here. So the, the frame is divided into two. You've got a first part, which is a service UID. Basically, this is something that is uh, specified by the Bluetooth core specification. So Ediston frames are in a way standardized. So it's, it's, it's values set here. And then you've got the service data. And here you put your, you know, the, the data you wanted to broadcast. Uh, remember I told you that each frame is identified by a value at a specific offset. So if you encounter an indistant frame and has the value zero at this precise offset, you know that this is an UID frame. And then we have 16 bytes um, to store an ID. And these 16 bytes are also divided into two parts, a 10-byte namespace ID and a 6-byte instance ID. So the whole, the whole ID here has to be unique. Uh, and the namespace ID has also to be unique to your project or to your company. So 10 bytes, it's relatively a long, you know, it's relatively long, so you will unlikely encounter a uh, collision. But in order to prevent any kind of collision, Google has made making some recommendation. And among them is to use a one-way uh, hash of your fully qualified domain name. So if you own a domain name like droidcon.fr, just apply a, a, like the SHA-1 and you take the first 10 bytes. Then you have the guarantee, roughly, that the namespace ID will be unique. And then you have the instance ID. This you have to assign of, on each of your beacons, you have to assign a value uh, that has a meaning for the project. So it could be any value, it could be random value, it could be incremental, it could be hierarchical, whatever you want. Uh, so here, as an example, the values are incremental. Um, sorry. So I told you uh, as an introduction that the, the beacon is a one-way communication, right? So how do I tell my beacon actually to advertise this precise value that I have configured? Um, actually, when you buy your device, um, the vendor gives you an application uh, that allows you to, you know, to configure, to, to update the firmware of the beacons, and in the meantime to update this kind of value. So you are the only owner of, this, of the beacon, so you are the only one who has the right to update your beacon and these values. So no one else on the field could you know, update these values. And the second type of frame we are interested in is the URL frame. So as the name states, these frames uh, stores an URL and the beacon broadcasts it. So once again, uh, how can I identify this frame among all the distant frames is if you have the value 16 at this precise offset. Then you have uh, 17 bytes to store an URL. So 17 bytes, it's quite short, right? <coughs> if you see, if you have params on your, on your URL or something. So the first thing that you can do is actually use shorteners like Bitly, Google, and actually it's recommended so it will drop down the size of your URL quite uh, dramatically. And the other recommendation of Google is, well, URL as a well-known part, <coughs> like, like, uh, like Scheme or the URL domain extension. So the Google said, okay, I give you a map here and you can replace within the service data, you can re replace well-known uh, part of your URL with one byte value. So, and let's take an example without using any shorteners. I have here very long URL, like 41 bytes. 
that won't fit in the 17 bytes available here. So using this mapping here, right, I'm able to, to drop the size to fit into the 17 bytes. Um, so what's the URL is used for? So what's the meaning of broadcasting a new URL actually? Um, this opens up the world to, to a new, this opens up to a new world called the physical web. I don't know if you have heard about it. <coughs> no one? Okay, that's good. So the physical web is actually also an open specification pushed by Google, so you can find um, the specification here that points to a GitHub page. Uh, the idea behind physical web is getting a new URL, getting a new URL into the, the, the user's phone. It's all about this. So remember a few years back when you were looking at a poster, you know, like a, a movie poster and you were interested in having more information? So you, you would have seen a new URL like titanicthemovie.com and once you will be home, you know, you enter this on your brother. So it was kind of difficult. Then appeared this kind of things called the QR code. You may have known about it. Uh, it's actually stick everywhere, on posters, on advertisement, on magazine, even on presentations. So you have this QR code everywhere. But the effort to get the information is roughly high, right? You have to take your phone off your pocket. Uh, you have to launch the scanner, the barcode scanner. If you don't have it, you have to install it. Uh, then you have to shoot precisely to this, to the picture, and then you've got the URL, all the information stored there. So actually, this is a lots of effort, and the user really wants the information, but it has a cost, right? So if if we want to, with physical web, actually, uh, when you're near the beacon, the URL is pushed to your device automatically. You don't have to make any effort, like, you know, and 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 the URL come as a notification either on your phone or on your wearables, and then you use the, the, you know, the well-known notification system. Either you dismiss your the notification or you, you, you click it if you want more information. And this is very good for business as well. Let's suppose that I'm walking next to a shop that I have the application installed and, uh, and an URL uh, pops in in my phone. And so this allows you to re-engage your user in some way, in, a, in really on the spot and uh, with deep linking, for instance. And the other thing is getting new users. Okay, I'm pushing a notification to you because you're near of something that could interest you. So maybe you can go to my web page with this link or download the application. Uh, yes. The last frame uh, that we will cover here is the TLM frame. Um, TLM stands for telemetry. Actually, the beacons broadcast uh, some internal information about battery level, about temperature, internal temperature, about the number of frames that it has broadcasted so far, also about the time since the device is up. Um, yeah, once again, you recognize this frame by this value here. Um, so I told you that the specification is still in progress, so maybe we can see in futures uh, some, some enhanced beacons. So let's suppose if I want to add some more um, sensors on the beacon, like a proximity sensor, and the sen like infrared or ultrasound, whatever, that is able to detect if something is on the beacon. Then let's say I, I, I'm deploying this on parking places, like in the public parking places. I'm gluing this on the floor, and whenever a car is parked on the parking place, <coughs> So the device is able to detect with the sensor that the car is here. And then we can have in real time, uh, you know, the availability of places in the city. So this could be a kind of, of information like uh, a car is here. It's a switch on or off. So this, is broad this could be broadcasted which in this frame, I hope so. so. And this kind of application can solve like congestion in cities or pollution or many things at a low price. Um, yeah. Let me show you some code now. Okay, we, we have beacons, let's say, deployed everywhere. And I want to create an application that could scan it. Um, so yeah, the, 
So you have to you know, instantiate a Bluetooth manager and use a Bluetooth LE scanner that came with the API 21. I don't know how it was, used, how it was before, to be honest, I haven't used uh, ma Bluetooth manager uh, quite a lot, uh, but the example is quite straight. So with the scanner, you, there is a method in the scanner called start scan, and you pass some filters, some scanning, some settings, and some callback. So the settings is roughly about uh, power mode. You said, well, scan it with low power mode. Right. Uh, and the filters here. So remember in the bottom, uh, sorry. Yeah, in the bottom here, what? No. Okay. Uh, in the bottom here, I have a URL frame. So remember the service UID told you that this is specified. So I'm 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 telling to this to the scanner, I'm telling I'm, I want to filter only a distance frames. So here I said, okay, the service data should be, should be these values, which is standardized. So setting the filter with service only scan the service UID that has this value. I have the guarantee that I will only scan a distance frames. And then let's say I'm only interested in URL frame, right? So I'm, I'm saying here, again, this, this value here at this offset is able to tell me this is a, a URL frame. So I'm saying to this only filter data that has the value 10 with a bit mask within the full frame. And then the magic happens here. A callback, I'm notified through a callback with few methods. And the one who interests me is the on-scan result. And then I can extract the byte, the, an array of bytes of the full data, of the full service data part of my frame. It's really, really easy, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, <coughs> here, the Beacon platform. So what's interesting here about Beacons, okay, you have 31 bytes. It's specified in the, in, in the documentation, the specification, and it's all specs, so you cannot add extra values. But what, what happens if I want to enhance my beacon with, let's say, some attachments, some description, some location? So I would have, you know, developed the whole backend to do this. So with the Edison announcement, Google made a bigger announcement called the beacon platform. So what, what? Okay, I'm sorry. So what they did here, actually they have announced uh, the Beacon platform, how, so how it works. Uh, you have a global Beacon database hosted by Google and provided to you for free. And you can register your, your Beacon here, this device on the field, you can register it against this global database. You're basically saying, hey, uh, I'm here and register it. Then you can attach to this beacon's attachments, you know, description, I told you description, and location and everything for free. So it's, it's, like, it's a backend provided to you to avoid you to develop something that all businesses that are working with beacons uh, would have developed in some way. <coughs> so you're interacting with this global database thanks to a RESTful API called the Proximity Beacon API. Uh, we'll cover in a in, in few minutes. Um, and again, when, once you have attached and enhanced your beacon description, you can consume it on your mobile application, either by using the proximity beacon again, or by using a more high-level uh, component such as the nearby messages API. We, we'll also cover it uh, in a moment. Uh, one other thing here. Um, the Beacon platform is not only dedicated to Ediston. You can actually enhance your Beacon if you're working with other kind of Beacons like iBeacon or Alt Beacon. Right. So it could be good to pr benefit from this platform um, easily. Uh, the only thing that I, I regret with this announcement uh, is the missing of any web management platform. Because today, if I want to register my beacon here, I still have some code to do using the beacon API. It would have been nice if I could have you know, some 
maybe it's a business opportunity for anyone. Like, you know, I can just, um, it's an abstraction to the, to the big, could be an abstraction to the proximity beacon API for registering, attaching uh, attachments and uh, providing information to enhance my beacon. So let's look of the proximity beacon API. So it's a RESTful API, it requires, it has five collections that you can interact with and it all requires <coughs> OAuth2 authentication, except for the beacon info that only requires like a key in your application, API key. So in order to benefit from proximity beacon API, you have of course to enable the API in your developer console. Uh, probably you have did it for other, other APIs. So let's see quickly what we could do with all this API. Uh, the beacon info, the first one here, that only requires an API key, uh, will give you a subset of the full information of your beacon, like a subset of the attachment, a subset of the description of your beacon. Uh, these collections here will give you the opportunity to register your beacons against the global database <coughs> and also to decommission it. Once you decommission a beacon from the, Google, from the database, you won't be able to register it again. It's, <coughs> you won't be able to do it. So if you want to register your same beacon on the, on the database, you have to change its ID. Um, you can also set some status of your beacon. You can say, okay, it's an active beacon, it's on the field, or it's a beacon that I'm still provisioning in my office, so I'm deactivating it. It's just a status. And of course, you can, when you register your beacon, you can put all the, all the extra information uh, that I've just told you. You can, of course, get the beacon, list all the beacons, and update it. Attachments, these collections here. So attachments allow you, this collection allows you to attach up to one kilobyte of data to your beacon. So which is quite interesting actually, it could be one attachment of one kilobyte or multiple <laughs> attachments up to one kilobyte for the total. Uh, so it could be any kind of attachments like blobs, JSON, XML, anything, binary, it's, it's all good. Then you've got the diagnostic. Here, by querying, you got the diagnostic API. Uh, you could have um, telemetry information of your beacon from the cloud, which is also good if you're managing your beacon fleets. And finally, you've got the namespace collection. So the namespace is not the namespace ID we have covered at the beginning. So don't be misled, it's the namespace uh, of your project within the Google Developer Console. So let's see of some JSON representation of a beacon. So I told you you can, the beacon is identified here by a name and an advertised ID. So this is basically some description of the UID of your beacon and says this, here you have, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a dead distant beacon, it's an eye beacon, and you've got the UID after. The status I told you just, just uh, before about <coughs> activated or deactivated, you can add a, lo a location to your beacon. You can either it could be a lat long or it could be a place ID if you're using the places API. Or it could be also some indoor level like this beacon is on the ground floor near the exit, the fire exit door. So you can combine all this and to have a precise location. Uh, you can also extend your beacon by saying, okay, this beacon is something static. It's, it's, it's tick there on the door or it, it's mobile, it's on my car, so it's something moving. Uh, you can, of course, add a description and add some key value properties. Let me show you some more JSON. Uh, when you query against the list <coughs> API of the attachments collection, it returns an array of attachments, which is roughly a key, a type, and a value, a base64 encoded. Right, so in my application, if, you know, if maybe I want to, I don't want to query about this, you know, to query about the, get the token, query about it, handle errors, uh, parse the result, uh, and then display it to my application. Maybe I want something more easy to do it. Um, that, that's where comes the nearby API, just here. So to be honest, again, I haven't played with this API, but the, the sample, the snippet here is very easy to understand. 
So I have on the bottom here nearby messages and I, I'm, I'm subscribing <coughs> to a strategy. Here I'm saying I'm only interested in messages uh, that are broadcasted by PLE devices, so in a world by beacons, right? And then you've got the listener. So whenever your, uh, your device and your, your application encounter, you know, encounter a beacon, this uh, listener here, uh, this callback here, uh, will be called. And you've got two methods, very simple method, methods. It's, I found the messages and I have lost the messages to you, no more in the range of the beacons. And the messages here are the attachments. So it's very easy, you just, you know, it's, um, nearby messages is part of the Google Play services. So again, you have to activate the API uh, within the developer console and then they include the, the library and you can use it. It's very simple and it's a very abstract way uh, to do so. Um, Yes, the only downside of this one is that you can only call it when your activity is visible. So you cannot do background scanning, which is obviously what interests us. So to do background scanning, you have again to use the, the API to make all the call, um, all the call that is not, uh, you know, that will consume some time. Uh, I mean, developing time, developer times. Um, and remember also the, the diagnostic API. This API here, this collection, will give me information about my beacon from the cloud. But in a way, the cloud has to know, you know the battery level of my beacon. Someone has to inform the cloud that the beacon has this kind of telemetry information. And as far as I know, this is done silently by your device using the nearby API. So every time you're using this, it updates the global database. So when you query against the API, the RESTful API, you get the information from the field. Okay, we have covered a lot of things here. I just wanted to, to sum up so you could have all the relevant information freshly at the end of this talk. So we have seen that a beacon is a, is a device that advertises data the technical world here. And Ediston is an open format beacon. So it's a specification that roughly says if your beacon is with support for Ediston, it has to broadcast, it has to advertise three kinds of frames. First one is the UID frame, the frame that identifies the identification of your beacon. The second frame is the URL frame, so it broadcasts a URL and it opens up to a new concept of physical web where the URL is pushed to your device, you're not pulling the URL anymore, <laughs> and everything related to the telemetry, telemetry frame. We have covered also the beacon platform. So this platform allows you to enhance your beacon by you know, adding attachments, adding a location, adding a uh, description, and also to monitor your fleet by the diagnostic. So to do so, we can interact with the platform with the database using the proximity beacon API, which is RESTful. And on the client side, again, you could consume all this enhancement here, either by using the, again, the proximity beacon API, or more easily about using the messages, the nearby messages API, or places API, and so on. So yeah, I went quite quick, uh, below some uh, more links if you want to dive a bit more. Thank you very much. If you have questions, don't hesitate. Hi. Um, the bottom line is uh, beacons can't push information onto a, a mobile phone. You have to have a scanner or something that's going yes. to search. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you still have a, have a scanner on your phone. But uh, I may I have heard that this will be natively in the US or in some application in some way in the future. So you won't, in the future you won't have to install this scanner. But yes, today you have to install a scanner anywhere. And then you have to connect that scanner with an application. Actually, no, I, ha I have installed a scanner here. You can find, you know, if you, if you write physical web on, on the Play Store, it's a scanner and whenever I, I'm 
you know, I, I'm next to a beacon that broadcasts an URL. I just got the notification. That's it. Uh, can you block that notification? Uh, it's all part of the notification system, the priority that you have on your phone. Ah, oh, okay. So, so yeah, so you're it's not going to be going into a shopping center or mall and, and being spammed and every five yeah, minutes. Yeah, th this is the risk actually. But with the notification system, I guess you can, you know, set priority priorities and say, okay, I don't want this one anymore, or, or stack them so I can dismiss it in. in uh, and the scanner currently is, is software. It's a software, yeah. But in the future, you reckon it's going to be hardware pre-installed? Uh, it won't be hardware. It will be still be software, but native. But it will be pre-installed. Yeah, pre-installed. I may have I've heard this, so I cannot, you know, uh, tell it for for sure. But this is something that I've heard. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. How how often are the beacons broadcasting? Yeah, uh, actually, it's around one or one and two seconds. One and two seconds. Yes. One to two seconds between the broadcast. Between each frame, and each frame is, you know, it's not broadcast at the same time. It's broadcasting one after the other, without any kind of or ordering. Okay. So it's up to the application, you know, to say, okay, this beacon, based on this MAC address and this telemetry frame, this URL frame, and this UID frame is of the same beacon. Thanks. And this this gives all the you know all the uh, the autonomy of the beacon. Up to a few years, uh, I may. I think I beacons transmit every 100 milliseconds, so it, this could drain the battery. Whereas the beacons with support for distance, I think, have a longer battery lifespan. Yes. Yes. Is there a security mechanism that prevents someone from uh, creating a perfect copy of a beacon? Uh, no, actually not. Um, I, I have have some discussion with uh, Google Advocate, saying, okay, well, I've got my namespace. Uh, I've got my instance ID. Uh, how could I prevent someone to, you know, to register uh, ID that could belongs to me in the future? And they said uh, nothing. So I, I told them, is it possible if I register a, a blob, you know, a, a, an amount of beacons that I I'm not using yet, but I will use in the future to prevent anyone registering same IDs? And they said to me that actually um, this could appear like an attack. So we're detecting this attack if you want to register like a thousand beacons on our database. So we want, we can't allow you to do this. But he told me that I, I think I can easily register 100 beacons um, with no issue in order to prevent any kind of, you know, someone stealing my ID or... But, but if some business put a, a beacon in a specific place, uh, it probably doesn't want someone to put a similar beacon uh, in another place. Yes. So there is no way to prevent uh, that kind of. Uh, no, actually, uh, um, yeah, maybe I don't know. It was just a question on my, you know, I'm just to know the limits of the of the platform. That was my question originally asked to them, and that that was their their answer. Actually. More questions? No. Yeah, here. Okay, thanks. I haven't seen. Pour recevoir le message, on doit, on doit être, enfin, l'appareil que l'on a, qu'on dispose, doit être, enfin, le Bluetooth doit être activé tout le temps, c'est ça Oui, exactement. Bluetooth. The, okay. I will repeat the question in English, maybe for the. To, to receive the, the message from the beacon, uh, will I need to to enable my uh, yes, yes, my yes. Bluetooth? Yes, actually, yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah, the, the Bluetooth has to be enabled in your uh, in a device, so you would be able to scan it. But if you want to use the Proximity Beacon API, so this is a RESTful API, so no need to Bluetooth connection, just, you know, it's just network connection to the... Yeah, Thank you. Thank you very much.